everybody. Uh, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be jumping into a video that is going to show you how to make these adorable little baby wooden teether rings. They are so cute. They, um, sorry, I'm trying to get a good angle here. They have um, an adorable little bunny fill ear. Um, so you've got your cotton fabric on this side and then on the other side you have like a absorbent fabric like a towel and you can purchase this fabric which is what I have laying here is like a white towel fabric I did buy some because it was on sale um, or you can go and buy a towel from Walmart or Target or Bed Bath & Beyond wherever you want to get your fabric from but that's all this is is a towel material and down here is your wooden ring these are um, chemical free they're all natural so they literally have been shaped and smoothed out so clearly there won't be any splinters but there's no chemicals, nothing on here that will harm a baby to chew on. So this is what we're going for today. So I set this over to the side. And I've already got this laid out, uh, my fabric. I've already made one uh, to show you so you can kind of see this little hole right here. Um, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to fold your fabric in half. And then you're going to be tracing your pattern on the side that is not open. So as you can see here, there's no cut where if you have it folded in half, your raw edges are going to be right here. Um, and you can tell, you know, clearly this is an open end. So on your closed end is where you're going to trace your pattern. And I kind of already started tracing, so I'm going to line that back up. Um, and I don't have any kind of um, fabric markers or pencils, so I'm just using an ink pen. Um, you can use whatever you want. I'm sure some of you will probably freak out that I'm using a pen, but it works and no one ever sees that I used a pen. So I'm just going to go around the edges holding this down and give me just one second and I will share with you where I got this template from. Um, I did not create it. I did get a free template from a blogger um, that she has it up on her um, site which I think I ended up finding from Pinterest so you are welcome to go there and get it for free all right so we have that traced out I'm sure you can see that showing up real nice in the camera <laughs> so I'm just gonna cut that out um, and this is the template that we're using today see Kate so and this is going to be uh, just you just one template here. This is why you fold it in half because when you open it, it will be double the size. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. Um, it's pretty thick, and my scissors are not wanting to cut through it, so I'm actually going to just use my. So here is that all cut out and I'm just going to move this out of the way. All right, so it's one thing about having a um, tripod that's connected to your table. I'm really sorry. I'm trying not to shake everything, but there's your piece right here. So like I said, once you open it, it should all be connected and it'll be the length that you need it to be. So we're just going to fold that up. And now we're going to move on to the fabric. Let's see if I can actually use a different fabric here. I've got so many different cute, adorable little fabrics going on here that I just don't even know which one to choose. Um, let's do this one. This is really cute. Um, Hobby Lobby. Got really pretty colors in it. It's got a nice foiled gold. So again, we're just going to have it's already folded for me um, because I just got it from the store. Um, but if you've used your fabric and have to refold it again, just remember fold it in half. And we're gonna lay our pattern on the um, closed crease edge here. And oh, I'm going to actually want to fold it with my um, outside showing. That way, you know the ink that pen that I'm using doesn't show. But like I said, it probably wouldn't show that bad, so if you really don't want to, you wouldn't. 
have to, but I don't want to risk it. So I'm just going to fold this in half. <clears throat> and it looks like it could use a little touch of ironing here. So I'm actually going to use my towel to put underneath here and try to press this down a little bit. Just enough to where it's not creasing up on me. All right. And I'll move everything over so that you can see it well. Okay. All right. So this is what we're working with. And we're just going to pull our template again. And I'm just going to put it over to the edge as close as I can here. And this will be probably a little bit easier to trace than the towel because there's not any of the, um, anything catching, snagging the fabric or the pen, I'm sorry. And if you move your thing, just line up your lines. Like I said, it's really not, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so there it is. And again, I'm just going to cut that out. But this time I'm gonna use my scissors. This fabric is much thinner. So now that we have everything cut, we're just gonna move it all, all this other stuff out of the way. All right, and then there's our pretty fabric here for the other side. So now that we have everything cut, we are just going to take our towel side also. And as you can see, you can kind of see the ink um, on here. I did not turn my around like I would have, like I did with this one, but your seams are gonna be a quarter of an inch. So you're not going to see that um, once the project's done. So like I said, again, if you don't cut perfect, it's not a huge deal. I know this is not a safe, uh, heat proof mat. Mm. All right. So let's get all these little towel lenties off. If you do have a lot of wrinkles in your fabric, you do want to iron it down first. Um, because if you don't, then it will be different sizes because this is not much, it's not a really a wrinkled fabric. Um, so you do just want to make sure that if you have lots of creases in here and throughout, you want to iron those down. So we're just going to go ahead and line this up the best that we can, especially your corners. That's like the most important part of this is your corners because you want to have, if it's what you're going for, you want to have that nice, clean corner. Um, and I have these straight pins, or I also have um, some little clampy type style that I got off Amazon. Yeah, so these came off Amazon. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> so you can also use something like this, um, and it just clamps on to your fabric. Um, but I think for this project, I'm going to go ahead and use the straight pins. I just feel like maybe those might slide a little bit more than I would like. So we're just going to go in with a few straight pins. Um, I do overly pin. I am just super paranoid about things, you know, sliding around and moving. Um, and with this fabric here, it is known to kind of slowly force its way over to the other side. So... I am just going to pin quite a bit here, so I'll get this done and then I'll come right back and then we'll jump into sewing. Alrighty, so now I have all that pinned. Just put some extra ones back in here. Alright, so now that I have all this pinned, I have my face of my fabrics facing each other. So basically the pretty side you want to um, face up and then the other pretty side of the towel 
which to me is the more fuzzy side, um, will then lay on top of here. So what you don't want to be seeing should be showing on the outside here, if that makes any sense. So now that we've pinned this down, I am now going to jump over to my sewing machine, um, which basically is just sitting in the floor next to me. So I'm going to pick it up real quick. And I am uh, just going to do a quarter of a quarter seam all the way around. Um, and when you sew this, you do want to leave probably about an inch wide of um, a gap here so that you can then turn your um, project facing the correct way. So I will probably start here, do a couple back stitches and work my way all the way around. And then I'll stop where my thumb is here, a couple back stitches, pull it off the machine and then turn it facing the correct way. So when I come back, we will do that process there, face uh, turning everything the correct way. Okay, so now I am back from sewing everything together. So there it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and clip my uh, strings. I did do um, back stitching at the beginning and the end of my opening just to secure the stitching. So we've got that trimmed. And corners did get a little off as you can see right there, but it's okay. I'm just gonna simply trim it off. It's no big deal. It's not gonna make it look any different. Um, this also happened to the one that I showed you in the beginning of the video. And to me anyways, I thought it turned out great. So it's no big deal. So I'm just gonna trim those really quickly. All right, so now I've got that trimmed. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get this going here. Didn't quite leave very big of an opening, so hopefully, um, hopefully, it will still do okay. Because <laughs> I don't have super, oh, first of all, let's go ahead and clip our edges here so they're not so pointy. And you know, the thing is you think you're cutting the point off, but your stitch is what's actually created your, your point. So if you look at your threading there, you'll see that it's still just as sharp as this fabric was before you cut it. So don't worry about you cutting it and it not being pointy because it will still be pointy. So I've just got those edges trimmed a little bit. So now let's go ahead and start turning this right side out. So I'm going to start here, and now I'm just going to start feeding this through. Uh, it should be pretty simple to do because it is a smaller project, and I actually just kind of get it started like this, and then once I get it fed all the way in there, so there's nothing showing, just this little bit, I just hold it from here and I do a couple of good shakes off the side here. All right, and that worked just great. So we've got it all fed through. And I'm gonna go back to my ink pen um, and I'm just gonna push my corners out a little more so they're a little sharp in this. You can kind of see they're a little straight. Um, and you can buy tools to turn your corners out, um, but I mean, a pen works just fine. So whatever you want to get, um, just as long as you can fit in there. So I've got it kind of scrunched up and now I'm just using my pen there to push my corners out a little better. And as you can tell, it has more of a point than a flat. Sorry, my light is a little bright instead of that flat look. So we'll just drop our pen out. We'll want to make sure this corner's pushed out really well as well. And you do still want to be careful with your corners because it is cotton fabric so it definitely could uh, puncture a hole. So now that we have this turned out the correct way you can see it's a little um, fluffy and the seams aren't together because now that we flipped it out we are going to have to do a top stitch. So you're going to want to then take your fabric over to your iron and press your seams flat. So that way you have a clean path of sewing your um, top stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then when I come back I will um, be sewing the top part of this and then we'll do the finishing steps. Alright guys so now that I have this nice and pressed 
around the edges, I will be able to quickly do a um, top stitch. And you want to start, uh, well, you really could start anywhere, but I like to start in my opening. Um, so I'm going to actually start right above here at the corner, and I'm going to back stitch a couple and continue all the way around until I get back to this side here, and then I will then meet back and back stitch again. So let's just hop right into the sewing portion, and then when we get back from that, I will then show you how to put this adorable little teether together. Alrighty guys, we are back from sewing. We've got it all top stitched. It looks so good. Got little pieces of fuzz on it, but it looks so adorable. Cute little bunny ears. So I'm just gonna get rid of my, um, there they are. I'm just gonna get rid of my little pieces of thread here. And I did back, st back stitch, so you can pretty much cut almost all the way down to the fabric, um, just to make sure that you don't have any threads hanging out anywhere. All right, so now that we've done that, now we get to put it together. And I'm telling you, I know you just saw it, but oh, it's so cute. So we've got our wooden ring. And what you're going to want to do to put this together is you're going to want to fold this in half. So now it looks like this. Um, and that's also another reason why I wasn't really concerned about the crease in this fabric. I don't know if you can see that right there because it's going to be folded in half and no one's going to really see it anyways. So we've got it folded in half. So now we're going to take our ring and we're just going to kind of pinch our ears together. We're going to slip it through here just like that. And then again, we're going to fold our fabric in half, but with the loop, just so it kind of gives you a more uh, perfected look here. So once you've done that, you're going to then kind of move your ears over to the side here and you're just going to open this up and you're going to push your ears through right like that. And then once you're done with that, you just pull. You'll pull those down. And that gives you your bunny ears. I mean, it's so cute. And you just kind of keep playing with it just to get your ears the size that you want them to be. Um, it's all in the look that you're going for, really. Um, and then, yeah, so there's your teether. I mean, how adorable is that? So cute. The fabrics, they're, they're endless. Your choices of fabrics are endless. Um, and they just make really adorable little gifts to throw in with your shower gift um, or just for your own baby. I mean, they're just almost like a cute little accessory um, that helps out with an outfit or just gives your baby that extra step of cuteness, but then also helps their poor little gums out as well. So this is the finished project. Um, and once you start going, it really does not take that long. So you are just going to um, take those quick steps and you'll have a cute little teeter just like this. So if you like this video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and even place some comments. Let me know what you think. Um, and then also if you are a more experienced sewer than I am, because I am a beginner, I would love to hear some tips and tricks that you have up your own sleeve. So drop those in the comments as well. Um, and if you also enjoyed this video, please subscribe just down there below and then hit the little bell just so you know when I uploaded some videos. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and I hope that you have a great day. Bye!